Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will cover a columnar database called ClickHouse. We will use ClickHouse as the target database for Apache Kafka streaming. This will be a perfect match for our stream processing application and real-time data analysis. Before we dive into ClickHouse, let's briefly discuss the difference between traditional databases and columnar databases. A relational database is optimized for storing rows of data, typically for a transactional application. In other words, all the values related to a row are physically stored right next to each other. A columnar database is optimized for fast retrieval of columns of data, typically for an analytical application. The values from different columns are stored separately and data from the same column is stored together. Column-oriented storage for database tables is an important factor in analytic query performance. It drastically reduces the overall disk input-output requirements, thus reduces the amount of data we need to load from disk. Column-oriented databases are designed to scale out using distributed cluster to increase throughput, making them ideal for data warehousing and big data processing. ClickHouse is such high-performance database it is a column-oriented SQL database for online analytical processing. It has open source and cloud-based offering. We can use ClickHouse if we need real-time responses over a large data set. Query results are returned in seconds. Here's a demonstration why columnar databases in some cases are 100 times faster than the traditional row-based databases. Based on the design, Row base must read all the rows and then filter out the data before it can send a response. On the other hand, columnar can quickly fetch columns of data and send a response based on the user query. Let's set up the ClickHouse database. On Linux, you can download the installer and install it. However, I am on Windows, so I'll run it as a Docker container. This is our Docker Compose file. We are using the ClickHouse server image and we have few configuration files. The first one is for the ClickHouse. In this file, we define the logging location, HTTP and TCP port of the server. Following this, we have the open SSL certificate configuration. Next, we have some server configuration, such as the inter-server HTTP host and inter-server HTTP port. These are used for data replication between servers. Following this, we set the max connection and concurrent queries limits. Here we have a reference to another user config file, which we'll take a look at next. The default profile and database name is set to default. We can also define Zookeeper configuration for ClickHouse, and we'll see the configuration in the Zookeeper file. Furthermore, we have query logs and more internal configuration for ClickHouse. In the Zookeeper config, we define the host and port so a ClickHouse service can locate the Zookeeper. In the user config, we set the memory limits for a query along with load balancing. In the user section, we define the user and the password. If no user is specified, then the user is set to default. We will leave it to default for now and skip over the codas. At the end, we have the Zookeeper configs, most of the folders, in this directory are blank. We'll see the database schema information in the metadata folder. So these are the settings of the ClickHouse server. Let's navigate to the root directory and start the ClickHouse service. We'll issue a docker compose up command. This will create and start the ClickHouse containers. We can connect to this database using dbeaver. Let's create a new connection and we will search and select ClickHouse. The server name is localhost and the port is 8123. Our username is default. And since we didn't specify a password, we will leave it blank. Let's go ahead and test this connection. The connection is successful and we are connected to ClickHouse. We have a default database and at the moment it is blank. So let's go ahead and create a table. This table will house data coming from a Kafka topic. I'll paste in a table DDL. We are creating a sales table with following columns. 
it is partitioned by sales order number and order by ID column along with sales order number. Once we execute the statement, our table is created. Let's head to Postman and create a JDBC sync connector that will read data from a Kafka topic and store the data in the ClickHouse sales table. We will use the following Kafka topic as our source. The topic has schema level details included in it. Let's review the source connector settings. In this connector, we have the schema key and the value are set to true. Both connectors definitions are available on GitHub. So let's go ahead and create the JDBC sync connector. The connector class is JDBC sync connector. We specify the table, source topic, and the mode. We set the auto evolve and create to true. The connector requires JDBC URL. So we point this to our ClickHouse instance. The key and the value converter are set to JSON. Finally, we define the primary key. And in this instance, it is set to the ID column of the source table. Let's do a post request on the Depezium Connectors API. We have a status code of 200. That means our sync connector is created. If you want, we can go ahead and check the status of the connector. Now let's head back to dBeaver and query the sales table. We query this table and as we can see, we have data flowing from Kafka topic to this table. Our ClickHouse database is set up and data is being streamed to it. We have successfully set up ClickHouse as the target database for our data stream. In the next session, we will utilize this setup for real-time data analysis, so stay tuned. Like, share and subscribe. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.